Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to our Prepared, Not Scared, what you need to know about graduating your homeschool, high school student. In this event, we are offering you intentional tools and tips for students and parents. And today I have Israel Wayne here to help me talk to you about establishing a biblical worldview of adulthood for your children. Israel, thank you for joining this online event. We're excited to have you here to share your wisdom and knowledge. That's great to be with you. Yeah. So you are first and foremost, a homeschool dad who has done this a few times, right? How many students have you graduated? I, I'm a homeschool graduate as well as a homeschool That's dad. That's true. Right. And, uh, yes. We have 11 children, uh, five of which have graduated. Okay. All right. Well, super. So you've got the experience as well as being a speaker um, conference speaker and an author of many Christian parenting books that we've published here at Master Books. And I know people love to read everything that you put your hand to. So we're definitely going to talk about some of that today. But first of all, I want you to help us define success in adulthood according to the Bible and how parents can be intentional to build that into their children's lives. So my wife and I, many years ago, developed a family mission statement, and we wanted to have a target so that we would be able to know whether or not we had been successful in the parenting process. Mm -hmm. uh, to ask ourselves 25 years from now, what would define success for us? That's so beautiful. I think it's always important for us to start with our why and then kind mm -hmm. of figure out the what after that or, or the how to after that. Right. So, mm -hmm. so we took a whole bunch of different scripture passages. Uh, I talk about these in my book, Raising Them Up, Parenting for Christians. Yeah. I have a whole uh, chapter in there where I talk about the family mission statement and then the Bible verses that like went behind the crafting of ours. But ours essentially boiled down to uh, we exist to know, love and serve God and to love and serve other people. So that's our goal. That's our end. And then everything mm -hmm. else is a means to that end. So I for us, it. homeschooling, academics, uh, textbooks, uh, living books, you know, all of the mm -hmm. things that we use, Bible time, everything that we're using, we are using as a means to help equip our children and prepare them for life. And the main goal of that mission statement is to not be focused on self, which is, I think, within the government school system. Uh, there's a very humanistic worldview that gets promoted where this is all about you. This is about your future success. It's about you being able to get a job, make money, be comfortable and affluent, uh, be successful in life as defined by the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a different end goal. Um, our goal is, is not to educate our children so that they can know, love and serve themselves. Uh, we want them to know, love and serve God and to love and serve other people. But in order to effectively love and serve other people, they need to have tools uh, and skills to be able to do that. And, and so I sometimes talk about how if God has called our child to be a medical doctor, they really need to apply themselves when they're studying anatomy and physiology, because mm -hmm. you don't want to sew your patient back up and have like spare parts left over and you don't know where they go. Sure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's not a it's not a blessing <laughs> to the people that you're serving or if you're an airplane pilot you don't want to have felt like it wasn't important to pay attention during physics and aeronautics classes because mm -hmm. it, it actually matters to those 300 people on that plane uh when you're falling from 30,000 foot at 700 miles an hour uh you, you you're not a blessing to them if you didn't think it was important to pay attention during your instrument training uh, You're so right. An engineer, you know, or an architect. If if you build a building and you just don't think that the laws of geometry matter, and your building caves in and falls, you know, you build a convention center and it falls in on ten thousand people, uh, you didn't glorify God, and you didn't love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And so, so we feel like sometimes there's a bit of a a false dichotomy uh, that we create as homeschoolers, where we say things that that i agree with on one level like i'm preparing my child for heaven and not for harvard you know, we, we have oh. these cliches and, okay. and and i fundamentally agree with that in a sense but sometimes um we we come across as being anti-academic 
or anti-intellectual. And I think that that's not wise for us as homeschoolers. Um, I believe that we're supposed to love our God with all of our mind as well as our heart. And so we don't just want children who have memorized 10,000 Bible verses and are of no practical use to their neighbors and to the world around them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're not trying to create a kind of asceticism where, you know, we go back to like the, the medieval monasteries where, you know, we just sit around in caves and, and read scriptures by candlelight uh, for our whole life, right? right? Our goal is that we want to be able to apply uh, wisdom to the world around us. And so that's where I think the homeschooling process gives us a great opportunity to excel, to do well at the academic portion. But to keep in mind why we're doing that, it's because whatever it is that God calls us to do with our life, whether it's being an accountant or an engineer uh, or an artist or a musician or whatever, we want to do it with excellence. We want to do it well to bless other people, to serve them, and to yes. glorify God. So that's that's really our why. And uh, we look for resources that help us to accomplish the how-to uh, mm -hmm. or the means to our end. That's so, so wise. And I would love for you to state your mission statement again and tell us about the book and which chapter you mentioned earlier that you talk about that. Yeah, so we, um, we talk about, well, we actually created a, a graphic that we turned into a poster. Uh, it, it's hanging in the living room of our home in, in the like high traffic area that we mm -hmm. go by all day, every day. And I would encourage okay. other families to do that too, to create a motto or a mission statement and, and then frame it or, or, you know, like mm -hmm. us create a banner or a poster or something and put it up on your wall so that you are constantly reminded all day, every day, like this is true North. This is the direction that we right. want to go. And so um, there's a, a section in the book. I don't remember where it is in, in raising them up, parenting for Christians mm -hmm. on developing a family mission statement. Mm -hmm. And so we, we walk through uh, why to do that and then share some scriptures that informed our, uh, our family mission statement. Yours doesn't have to look exactly like ours. If you want to sure. plagiarize ours, that's completely fine. We didn't trademark <laughs> it, uh, but it's, it's, we exist to know, love and serve God and to love and serve other people. And also I think there's a, uh, a little bit longer and expanded version of that in our new catechism, which is called foundational mm -hmm. truths. And there's a question in there, like what is the chief purpose of our life? Mm -hmm. And I, I give a, a kind of expanded version of that in the new uh, foundational truths catechism as well. That is, they're both such great books. And I know that the people that do the reviews for our books, the rec, um, reviews and recommendations are just wonderful on both of those. And so we highly recommend them. Um, we'll make sure that you find the links to those both at masterbooks.com. But um, the raising them up, that's for parents specifically. But then your foundational truths, the modern catechism, that's for that's for the teens and yeah, the whole family. Yeah. So your whole so, family so, uses that. Yeah, exactly. We, we encourage families to use that uh, as part of family worship. Um, mm -hmm. So a student could do it on their own, uh, certainly, and just to learn Bible doctrine. But I think it's most yeah. effective when you gather the whole family around. And we have teens all the way down to toddlers that we're doing it right now. We're actually going through it as a family ourselves, uh, going through each of the questions. And uh, it's been really enriching for our children, it just gives you handles to be able to answer the uh, 52 of the top Bible doctrine questions um, mm -hmm. with answers given as much as possible directly from scripture itself. Right. And so that is building the foundation. It makes me think of Isaiah 54, where he says he's rebuilding the foundation with precious jewels or sparkling gems. And so that's what I see happening with this tool that you've created for families, you're rebuilding it on God's word to make sure they can stand in the culture, which is not um, leading by God's word. So tell us, you've told us about a couple of those tools already. Are there any others that you recommend um, outside of raising them up and foundational truths? Well, my book, Education, Does God Have an Opinion, I think is super helpful in terms of learning how to teach a biblical worldview in every subject at every grade level. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a template that when you're using your curriculum, you know how to, I call it go on a God hunt 
and to teach your children, what does this subject teach us about the nature and character of the God who created it? Beautiful. And yes. so I think that's really important as well to, to not see academics as being secular and the Bible as being mm -hmm. sacred. I think it's a mm -hmm. huge problem that we've created uh, within the Christian culture is that we see employment as secular. We see science and medicine and mathematics and engineering and all of that as secular endeavors. And then our sacred life is like going to church, being a missionary, reading the Bible, small group, you know, those are all mm -hmm. sacred endeavors. But really from a biblical worldview, all of life is sacred because our, our the entirety of our life belongs to God. And God is equally interested in us raising cows and in us uh, building houses and in uh, us maintaining our homes and so the act of washing dishes and folding laundry uh, when done for the glory of God and for the service of others is not less sacred than uh, prayer time and fasting and Bible reading. Those things mm -hmm. are, can all be uh, part of our overall worship to God. Right. And so, um, again, helping our children to be able to see the integration of faith into every facet of life every sphere of our existence is essential and the education does god have an opinion book does that in helping them to really see how uh, every aspect of our life is sacred and it's important to god and it's all spiritual and so um, i would encourage parents to familiarize themselves with the philosophy that's promoted in that book uh, which which integrates so well into the master books curriculum uh, and I appreciate that about master books that they're constantly talking about how do you apply faith to every mm -hmm. aspect of life. So what we don't want to do is like basically mm -hmm. take this secular curriculum and just stick some Bible verses in. And right. I think master books has been master books has been very good at avoiding that, at making sure that we learn how to think biblically about mm -hmm. every academic discipline, and again to see it as a means for glorifying God and for um, loving and serving other people. Right. And I can't remember if it was you or Randy Pratt, the president of New Leaf Publishing Group and Master Books, who said that they would even recommend that the students, the older students, read Education Does God Have an Opinion? Absolutely. Because they are becoming adults who are going to make choices about their children's education. Totally. I believe that entirely. I think for many homeschooled graduates, they have an experience with homeschooling. Mm -hmm. And for many of them, their experience is positive but they don't have a philosophy of education. Uh, they don't really have a worldview behind why they do what they do or wh why they were home educated. And so I think it's vital for us to prepare our teenagers to not just have an experience, but to actually have a theology uh, of yes. education. And the Education Does God Have an Opinion book helps to equip them with that. Absolutely, so we recommend that as well. Talk to us about critical thinking skills and the ability to think independently from the crowd and how you and your wife have helped your children develop those skills. Well, we've actually tapped into a lot of the elective courses that Masterbooks has published. So one of our favorites is Logic by Jason Lyle. Mm -hmm. um, there's both the um, textbook and workbook, but there's also a video series through master books academy that right. jason lyle actually teaches that class so i know some uh, homeschool co-ops actually are using that collectively where they'll have a, a large class that all goes through the logic course together that's a great way to learn but if you're doing individual learning and maybe don't have access to a co-op that's doing it together as a class uh, jason lyle's videos um, are excellent taking you through learning how to think uh, logically and understanding that logic comes from the mind of God. That's why logic exists as a mm -hmm. category in the world is that God instilled logic into the fabric of, of our existence. And so logic is not an invention or a creation of man. It is a creation of God that humans have discovered and have systematized and formulated uh, and communicated in a way that we can uh, can understand the, the really the laws that govern uh, all of life. And so, uh, you, you know, you really can't have logic emerge out of a chaotic evolutionary worldview. 
uh, logic is something that is consistent with the mind of God. So I, I highly recommend that course as, as one. And we have a couple others um, that we've relied on very heavily as well. We really like apologetics in action, which is a mm -hmm. high school level course uh, that has how do we know the Bible is true? Uh, volume one and two. I think I got the title there. The wording might be slightly off, but I think it's something like how do we know the Bible is true? Volume one and two. Mm -hmm. Ken Ham and Bodhi Hodge. And uh, I think there's some other authors in there as well. And then uh, there's the Demolishing Supposed Bible Contradictions, Volume 1 and right. 2. And then there's a student workbook that goes along with that. Excellent course on helping them to learn how to answer the, uh, the most difficult questions. There's also the Answers Set by Ken Ham, which is four volumes. So one, two, yes. three, and four. Uh, they go through so many of the objections that people raise to biblical Christianity and uh, give biblical and scientific evidence for why the Bible is reliable. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's a, another one that we really like that is called Worldviews in Conflict yes. by Kevin Swanson. And that's a high school level course, probably would recommend 10th grade and above for that, uh, where it goes through literature, philosophy, the arts and helps you to think through all of those categories from a very distinctively biblical framework. And so we are so thankful um, for those courses. Um, I, I also, you know, this is maybe, maybe doesn't seem like it fits in as well, but I really like the economics course. Okay. Um, and, and well, and the civics course, because what, what those things are is they're how we apply our faith practically to the everyday world, right? So mm -hmm. the way to think biblically about law and government and civics is so important as an application. And then our, our finances, um, macro and micro, um, is, is so important as well. And so the, um, the, the economics course uh, that has, there's like a video and, and the a book and, you know, there's a whole set that goes with that. But we really, really like those resources as well, because it helps our child to know how to externalize their worldview again in some areas that people would think of as being secular well mm -hmm. law government politics that's secular economics that's secular um, our view is that god created government romans 13 tells us that emphatically there's no power that exists that it was not established by god um, and then also god created uh, the laws that govern uh, finance and economics. And when we do things his way, they work. And when we mm -hmm. violate his principles, they don't work. And so the same mm -hmm. God who made the laws of motion, of gravity, uh, of of physics, of thermodynamics, uh, when we try to, to violate the laws of, of gravity and we jump off of a 10-story building, things don't go well for us. And when we violate the laws that govern uh, economics um, and, and we have un unjust weights and balances, when we steal from our neighbor, uh, when we are dishonest with our business practices, things don't go well for us. It's the same thing. And so exactly. the same God who made the laws of uh, of motion and physics made the laws that govern economics and made the laws that govern relationships. And again, you know, we are unfaithful in our, our relationships. We lie. Uh, we misrepresent our friends. And things don't go well for us. And so we really want our children to see that uh, having a right biblical theology and a right biblical worldview matters dramatically in terms of success in life. And if, if we want our children to be successful, and we mean that in a, in a biblical definition of that term, uh, we really need to understand what the scriptures say and align ourselves with that. Uh, mm -hmm. But we will find that I think in many ways, um, generally speaking, broadly, generally speaking, our lives will be more successful, even in terms of the way the world defines success, um, when we're aligning ourselves with the way that God made the world. <laughs> and so, so typically we will find that we are, we're less likely to be imprisoned. We're less likely to go bankrupt. We're less likely, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, bad things happen to good people. So I'm, I want to clarify. Sure. That. Suffering but, is a part. Exactly. So, so there's that side. We live in a fallen world, but in general, um, people who don't who don't lie and steal and cheat and connive and 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 live duplicitous backstabbing lives mm -hmm. uh, tend to have better success in life. And so, there's a correlation to th these things that the Scripture teaches about how we should live, and then 
uh, being able to live a life that we we experience um, maximum uh, you know opportunity uh, for good within this mm -hmm. life. And so when I think about raising my teenagers and preparing them for life. Um, I really want them to to understand these principles that it matters how we relate to people and it matters uh, how we run our businesses and how we manage our finances yeah. and all of that as well. That's really so wise. How do you um, recommend or how in your family, how do you see this work? It takes a lot of strength to stand against the way of the world. I mean, it takes a lot of strength when you're out in the world, depending on who you're around. So how do you develop that strength as a homeschool family when you are um, spending most of your time together? So you all think alike, you're building their character in that way. How, how do they get fresh strength as they're moving into their career, moving into college um, to stay there, to stay grounded when all of a sudden there's exceedingly more peer pressure, not just from peers, but even from their bosses or their college professors, people that they are now um, in relationships with? Well, uh, the, the answer I'm going to give will probably maybe be unexpected, but I think okay. that the two of the biggest things that we can do to help our young people not shipwreck their faith uh, mm. in their older years and like their college age years is number one, to do everything within our power to have a strong marriage because there's so much that, um, and, and I can even point to studies and statistics that would verify this, mm -hmm. but there's so much about the Christian life that is not merely something we articulate. It's something that we model. And so I think the importance of, of fathers um, being spiritual leaders in their home, of being um, an example to their mm -hmm. children is so vital, but husbands and wives loving each other and having a united front and, and being um, godly themselves yes. um, and modeling for their children the way they want their children to live. So, so important. I've known of uh, hundreds for sure, you know, bordering on probably thousands of young people that I've met and um, they, they have, you know, been shaken in their Christian faith. Some have deconstructed, walked away from Christianity. And I find out later that much of it had to do with a lack of strength and stability in the marriage relationship. Mm. And that undermines everything in the home. And so uh, that piece is, is way more important than, than we think of it sometimes. We think sometimes that all we have to do is give our children an information download in terms of like buying the right curriculum. Yeah. And I'm all about the right curriculum. Sure. And that's part of why, you know, we use master books. I love master books. But, you know, Jesus said when a student is fully trained, he'll become like his teacher. And so there's a part where this modeling and mentoring is very personal. And mm -hmm. our children listen to what we say, but they watch how we live. And so mm -hmm. I, I think that would be uh, the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say regarding that, and again, this may seem kind of counterintuitive, but seeing that they have a strong investment in the body of Christ. Okay. And, and not just in the youth group, not just in a, an age segregated, you know, group, their own age that, that has a lot of pizza parties and fun and games. Right. <laughs> they really learn how to integrate into the entire life of the church with older people, younger people, but where mm -hmm. they develop some spiritual mentors that are not the parents that are mm -hmm. part of the body. Um, the current statistic is that only 11% of churched young people are still attending church in their college years. And we're seeing a 70% fallout, you know, of young wow. people around that high school graduation age. And then of, of the 30% that make it past high school graduation saying, I'm still a Christian, an additional 70%, according to Pew Research, will say, I'm not a Christian by the end of their freshman year at a secular college or university. Wow. So you have that's... this massive fallout in the freshman year uh, at a secular college or university. But when you realize that 89% of all of those church youth stopped attending church, they stopped mm -hmm. being integrated into the life of the body of Christ in that time period, that is significant. And so... You find that young people who stay connected to the church, who stay involved with accountability uh, mm -hmm. in those college years, do significantly better. And so I think that um, 
can continuing to maintain a close relationship with your young adults um, as they are spreading their wings and, and mm-hmm. leaving the nest and all of that is essential where they know that mom and dad are a safe, wise place for them to come for counsel and guidance. But, but we can't be everything for those young adults. They need spiritual mentors that are not us that are yes. going to reinforce the things that we have been trying to teach them up to age 18. And mm-hmm. so um, really encouraging them throughout their life to, to plug into the life of the, the church again, not just the sixth grade class, but the whole body mm-hmm. and to see, to see that the church is where we go when we lose our way, when we, Uh, are confused, when we are having doubts, when we um, are are uncertain about our future, uh, we run to the church and we we run to Christ, right? But it's just so easy for the enemy to pick us off when we're separated from the herd, if you will. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I, I watch, I have these little children who like to watch animal videos. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. And so we watch all kinds of these YouTube animal videos and you see sometimes where the, the lions are like tracking the wildebeests, right? And, okay. and what they'll do is they'll wait for one that just gets off uh, from the herd and gets separated and isolated and they'll go and they'll get that one. Um, and there's just safety in staying connected to the body of Christ because um, we have community and we have support and we're not just out there all alone. And Hebrews talks about that, that we, we shouldn't separate ourselves, Mm -hmm. we should stay connected to the body of Christ, lest we become hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And I Mm. think that happens that the world is very alluring. It's very deceiving. And Mm -hmm. it's very easy for our hearts to become hardened through the deceitfulness of sin when we fail to meet regularly with God's people and to be open and accountable to them. So I think those things, you know, really focusing on having a strong marriage and then staying connected to the body of Christ uh, is essential for our young people when they begin to leave home uh, Mm -hmm. so that they know, so they know where to go because they will get hit by doubts, hit by temptation. Uh, They'll be hit by all kinds of things. And knowing where where to run uh to christ and to his body mm-hmm. and, and, and hopefully still to mom and dad <laughs> you know not not like yeah. move home i'm not saying that right saying, you know I, and i get phone calls from my my young adults and they say hey i, I need some advice um i have this you know dilemma uh what should i do mm-hmm. and i don't always tell them what to do but i help them think through it and pray with them and you know give them some counsel and guidance that's great. So as you were talking, I was thinking it would be so good for parents to create an accountability plan mm. that the students have knowing going into the next phase of their life. So after they graduate high school, there's already here's what me and my parents have planned to do to keep me accountable to my faith in Christ. And um, I think that would be a great, great thing to work on and and to have them have ownership in so that it's, it's ready. That's already in place for them because that's an astounding statistic that that many students at at a secular college would leave the faith in one year. Yeah. And I think when you look at Daniel and his friends, I Mm -hmm. like how it says in the scripture that they purposed in their hearts ahead of time that they would not defile themselves when they went to Babylon. And you have to do that because you're going to go into a world that essentially is a a kind of Babylon. And Mm -hmm. when you do that, you have to have a plan (laughs) and they, and they, they had a plan, but they also had community. And there's a lot of research that also shows that when you are not alone, um, you're much more likely to be able to stand against opposition. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so uh, purposing in your heart, knowing what you're probably going to face. And then, yeah, like you said, having a strategy, for what's what's my support network and and what what are my uh, non negotiables here? Whether right. it's sexual, whether it's sexual purity or mm-hmm. whether it's related to uh, more uh, ethical conduct uh, or or just things like that. Um, you know, e- even I, I think the pressure now um, it's always been this, but 
the pressure to to cheat in college is so high like with ai wow. and all of mm -hmm. this you know that there's just so much pressure to you know i can probably cheat and fudge and get away with this right mm -hmm. and i think that some of that will come back and bite students um because there's also ways to find out if you cheated and mm -hmm. i think just just having accountability in your own heart and mind and not just be like well everybody does it you know, right everybody's doing this everybody it's not a big deal right but the purpose in your heart that you're not going to be defiled and and just not going to be like the world you have to determine that ahead of time um i think joseph is another example of that in Potiphar's yes. house that he was he had a resolve and he just knew I can't sin against God like even if nobody else knows what I'm mm -hmm. doing God knows what I'm doing and so yeah. having that kind of conviction ahead of time and and those resolutions ahead of time is so important yeah and just living with that knowing the truth that God is with me Jesus is Emmanuel and he, God is with me right now. No matter who else is looking, like you said, God is watching. And, and I am serving an audience of one. He is he is the purpose for my life. Yeah. And I think we have to remember, too, as homeschoolers, our goal is not to shelter our children so that they can be sheltered. Mm -hmm. Our goal as homeschoolers is to shelter our young children in their vulnerable season so that mm -hmm. they can go out and be arrows in the hands of a mighty warrior to uh, be engaged in this battle against the kingdom of darkness yeah. uh, and to be, be great agents of light and truth in the world. So our goal is ultimately uh, that we want them to, to engage the world for the cause of Christ. Um, and we're not ultimately just trying to hide them from the world for the sake of hiding them from the world but mm -hmm. but when they're young and vulnerable uh we do want to make sure that we we keep them safe from things until such time as as they're mature and that they're ready mm -hmm. and we don't release them uh too quickly and expose them too quickly to uh, falsehood and error and and worldliness and all of that um, we need to teach them how to be resilient and stand against it it's it's a little like when people raise a plant in a greenhouse and then they transplant it out into mm -hmm. the harsh weather conditions, but they have this, this nice little uh, controlled environment for a yeah, season. Yeah, I love that analogy. So that yeah. the, the plant becomes strong. And then when this plant is strong, you know, you can put it out there and it will withstand the, the wind and the rain and the weather and all of that. Uh, and mm -hmm. so I think that's kind of what we're looking at with this homeschooling process. Uh, we're not just throwing them out there to the predators when they're young saplings. We're we're trying to create the right kind of environment that puts the good stuff in, keeps the bad stuff out. But the goal is not to have the plant live in the greenhouse their whole life. Um, the goal is for them to be able to stand on their own, firmly planted in the garden and to survive and thrive uh, and reproduce. And so um, that's our that's our goal, that they would make disciples, that they would be you know, sharing their own faith, um, telling others about the gospel and, and helping to make disciples. So yeah, that's, uh, we again, we just have to keep the end in mind, right? Um, yes. And, and the means uh, sometimes does look like, yeah, we're trying to, to keep the bad stuff out and put the good stuff in, but for the purpose of them ultimately being, being prepared to, to face um, the, the error. And I'll just throw this resource out there as well. Um, I, I think another great resource Masterworks publishes is the um, world world cults and religions mm -hmm. because there really are so many false ideologies out there as well and so for the the senior high level i really recommend that one where once they're grounded in a lot of bible truth um and thankfully masterbooks has so many great resources in terms of of helping our kids to establish just good bible doctrine we, we like the 10 minute bible journey for the elementary yeah. age, a uh, great resource we use in our family. And uh, there's like where faith grows and there's so many of these other resources mm -hmm. that kind of um, cr create this framework for understanding biblical theology. Uh, but then I think equipping them to be able to stand against the false isms that are out there with, with cults mm -hmm. and false religions. Uh, I, I really like that resource as well. And there's a three book set with the world cults and religions books and there's a student workbook as well mm -hmm. be utilized. And um, I, I know it's hard with those elective courses because parents feel like we're just struggling so much 
with the core. Uh, we're mm -hmm. struggling so much just with um, fitting in the things we absolutely have to teach that yeah. we just don't have a lot of time for all these other electives. But my favorite courses <laughs> that Masterbooks produces are those electives. Uh, and I suppose I should mention my own as well. Yeah, in fact, I think I have a copy of it here uh, for those who, who don't know what it looks like. Uh, they're watching the video. But Foundations in Faith is a Bible Doctrine curriculum for high school. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really for about ages 12 through 18. Um, some 12 year olds might find it a little rigorous, but certainly 14 through 18 for sure. And it's a 36 week course that goes through the essential primary doctrines and then introduces our students to the secondary doctrines. It's non-denominational. So we're not pushing them towards a particular church tradition or denominational slant, um, mm -hmm. but we want them to be informed. And so uh, we, we teach them, these are the things that define Christianity. And then there are some secondary doctrines on which Christians disagree, but we want you to be familiar with um, some of the different viewpoints. But then we direct them back to their parents and their local churches for kind of resolving, like, where, what do I believe about those secondary yeah. doctrines? And uh, so we're not making those decisions for them. But I've heard from so many students, um, and that resource really only been out for, I think, a little over a year. Mm -hmm. uh, so many students who have said, that has really helped me become solid in my faith and understanding what I believe. I was just in uh, Branson, Missouri this last weekend, uh, speaking at a conference down there and a teenager uh, came up to the table and was telling me that she's going through that as a high schooler and that it's really helped to equip her to be able to just think solidly about Bible doctrine right. and theology. And uh, that's certainly very rewarding. Uh, as an author, but but even uh, even if I hadn't written it, just uh, I applaud any time a teenager is taking time to really become solid in what they believe about the scriptures. Um, that's that's rewarding, I think, for any of us as a Christian. We we want to see that in the next generation. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a harvest of whatever families choose to do with the time that they have to steward their children's minds and their hearts, there's going to be a harvest. And I'm so thankful for everything that you have written and the way that you lead to help families bring in the harvest God expects that he is wanting to help people be fruitful spiritually and multiply the faith and equipping people with the faith to help them stand and not fall prey to the roaring, the one who roars like a lion. Well, I'm, I'm really blessed, uh, you know, to have a working relationship as an author with Masterbooks. I write parenting books and books on education, homeschooling, mm -hmm. and a couple of theology books and all that. But our family, um, we're also customers of Masterbooks. Okay. And so we we buy Masterbooks curriculum for our family because we really believe in the worldview that's being presented. Uh, we like the fact that it takes a bold stance on the authority of scripture. Uh, we mm -hmm. love that it is a creationist perspective, that it's permeated with Christian apologetics, which helps our children to defend their faith. And so we actually use um, a, a ton of Masterbooks materials in our own homeschool with our own children um, as customers. And we would, uh, whether I was an author with Masterbooks or not. Um, I, 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 full disclosure, I actually grew up loving master books creation books when i was a homeschooled student i was a big fan of henry morris and dr john morris mm -hmm. and uh, loved those resources way back in the 80s and so yeah uh, i've had a great love for master books as a publishing company for so many years and mm -hmm. so um we we would be a, a master books family uh whether we i had a working relationship with master books as an author or not but uh, we really appreciate the integrity behind the, the publishing company and working with the publishing company as an author. Um, I've had the opportunity to get to know the people who are on staff and to just mm -hmm. see the integrity with which the organization is run. Uh, I've worked in Christian publishing my whole life because my mom was in publishing back in the 80s. And I, I started working in Christian publishing in the 90s. And, and you just don't find that level of integrity uh, as a rule within the Christian publishing world. I hate to say that, but it's true. Um, mm -hmm. there, there are many, many uh, Christian publishers that are owned by non-Christian companies, and it's really about the money. It's not really about the gospel. And to um, to know 
that um, that New Leaf Press and Master Books has a commitment to the authority of Scripture and to not compromising the Bible has been so encouraging. And so, as someone who kind of gets to see a little bit behind the curtain, yeah, um, I am really grateful for the the thorough integrity that I've experienced in the last, I guess, eleven years that I've worked with the, the publisher as an author. Uh, that just reinforces what I what I would have seen as a customer. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just like doubly convinced um, that Masterbooks is a, is a name I can trust. Uh, and so when new resources come out, we just buy them. You know, like right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> thank you. you. Just know, like this is going to be good. We we really have a a trust that has been established over the last decade. And and so I know many many other families feel exactly the same way. Well, we appreciate that. We are so thankful that you've chosen to publish your books through our company. And we're thrilled that your family's using our homeschool curriculum. And for those of you who are watching and don't know, we've been around since 1975. And our mission statement has been ink on paper to touch eternity since that day. And so we've been publishing books for a really long time, books that um, identify how science proves the creation story of the Bible as well as theological books, biblical history, ways that you can understand how the Bible and our history go together. So um, there, there are so many resources that we've been putting into people's hands for a long time. And we started publishing homeschool curriculum to go along with those books um, in 2012. So we've been at this a while for homeschooling, but we've been at it a long time for um, trade books. So thank you for that. Thanks for being our customer and our friend and, and an author with us. It's my pleasure. And uh, I really strongly encourage families that if you are uh, still looking for curriculum or trying to decide uh, you know, what to use, I, I love the fact that Masterbooks is affordable. It's one of the most affordable curriculum programs on the market. It's designed for homeschool families not mm -hmm. for classrooms. So you're going to spend a lot less time per day uh, using master books than you would a curriculum that is designed for a Christian school classroom. I'm not throwing them under the bus. I'm just saying that mm -hmm. they schedule their, their day that you're going to spend an hour a day doing math and an hour a day doing English and master books. You'll probably be able to do in perhaps half the time uh, that it would take to use a curriculum that's designed for the classroom. And so there are uh, so many advantages. It's amazing to me that they that Masterbooks keeps their costs so low and makes it so affordable for us as homeschooling families because the production is top shelf. The graphics are fabulous. They're beautiful aesthetically. The layout and all of that is just as high quality uh, as you can get in the publishing world. Again, I've worked in publishing over 30 years. Um, nothing is, is done inferior. Uh, so I love the aesthetics. I love that it's it's beautiful. My children love looking at the books. They Good. they love the pictures. Um, it, and the authors um, are people who, again, are people who uh, most of them are are homeschooling parents, uh, but they're Christians. Mm -hmm. They love Jesus, and um, and have a biblical worldview. So it for us for us for our family, um, it's been a win all the way around. I feel like it has uh, you know the highest biblical worldview content with the most affordable price and the highest production quality. And so for me as a parent, I'm like, what, what would I not like about that? It's just, it's an ideal <laughs> combination for us as a family. It makes our decision really easy. Well, thank you for sharing that. And for those of you who are listening to these kind words from Israel, we did not expect him to say those things that it was not and part I'm of not our discussion ahead of time. Books. I'm not I, I'm not an employee I just no. I am a homeschool dad and uh, a family that's uh, you know we're we're fans uh, along with many of the thousands of other fans yeah well thank you for that thanks to everybody for tuning in for this portion of our online event we're excited to have you with us we hope this was extremely helpful for you and um, we look forward to serving you with the next show